Um, I'm excited about this next one. We have got a couple of actual customers, people who do business with us, and uh, we are thrilled that they are taking the time to, uh, to talk with us this afternoon. Um, it means a lot, right? They are taking their whole day just like you are, but they're also coming up to share some of their thoughts and ideas on what's working and where their challenges are. So let's just get them up on stage. Guys, don't move yet. Uh, two people to introduce. Ralph Graves, who's the manager of mailing services for Time Customer Service, and Chuck Alsdorf, who's the vice president of business development for PrimeNet. So guys, welcome. Come on up. First chair next to Brian. Sure. Ralph, how are you? Good. 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 Chuck? Welcome to stage, right there. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for being here. I'm waiting to see who's coming in next so we can embarrass them. Yeah. Esther. Is that her name, Esther? Is she here yet? We'll get her when she comes in. Guys, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Um, so You're welcome. let's level set everybody, right? Probably the best start to place to start is tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about Time Customer Service and PrimeNet. So, Ralph, let's start with you. Sure. Well, I'm Ralph Graves, and I'm sort of a front end manager, if you will, at Time Customer Service, not only responsible for the acquisition side of the magazine business that Time Inc. owns, but also for the, uh, I'm sorry, for the retention business, but also for the acquisition business. So my daily routine is typically, you know, running a print shop and running a, uh, you know, the front end of the bindery, if you will, everything prior to inserting side, as well as handling about 80 to 90 million pieces of direct mail from design all the way through mailing from a campaign management perspective. Okay, and Chuck? I'm Chuck Alsdorf, uh, PrimeNet Marketing Services. Uh, I'm responsible for all the sales of PrimeNet. Uh, have been around that organization for roughly 20 years. Uh, prior to that, I was with Merrill Corporation, a graphics group that uh, basically produced financial uh, statements and annual reports. And everybody pretty much knows what happened to that business. Uh, happy to be in the, uh, the direct marketing arena. So, your, and your side of the business with PrimeNet is really customer acquisition. Customer acquisition. Right? So, kind of got two guys who are in the direct mail business, but coming at it almost from different sides, right? One of you's focused not primarily, but mostly on retention. That's correct. Right? Okay. The other on, on client acquisition and, and some of those kinds of things. So, um, maybe a good place to start is what's what are the similarities coming from both sides of that? What are the differences? What are the challenges that you're up against? Well, actually, Chuck and I met each other just last week. He came over to get a, a tour of time, you know, time customer service to see what we were about. I've not really been at his shop, but you know, the reality is, you know, we, we got a whole lot of production to get done, and we have some similarities, and you know, maybe you know, some common ground as well as as far as what we print and what we do and. Ultimately, the customers that we serve, you know, from a production perspective, I think we're about probably a tad, big, a tad busier or bigger volume-wise. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about getting the job done and keeping the customers happy, right? Yeah. Chuck? Uh, about 80% of our business is lead generation, 20% is retention. Uh, and on the lead gen side, we're always looking at different tools to drive that uh, process. And uh, I went over to, to visit with time. Uh, customer service, again, just to see, see the similarities. Uh, we run iGens, we run uh, Highlight Color 180s, uh, and Ralph has a very similar uh, iGen Series 3, identical setup, identical so software, hardware, and, but one thing that he has that I don't have is a 40, uh, 495 where we can do the 26 inch, and uh, we're gravitating to that side. So it's uh, even though he's on the retention side, I'm on the acquisition where we're out there every day, there's still a spot for not only the, the five and a half, eight and a halfs, but also the larger sheets and the tonnage. So uh, there's a lot of, it was a great exchange. Mm -hmm. And the exchange came about because basically we were kind of like the, the dating service, right? We introduced you two because of the panel. Um, you're both from Flo Florida, right? Uh, both. I'm Upper Midwest boy. Uh, well, I mean, your business. Florida here, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. But I think it was kind of the classic case of what we're trying to achieve here is have you meet a peer, somebody else who's in the industry, working on maybe some similar yeah. strategies or acquisitions and maybe benchmark and 
Uh, you each take away something from the other's business, and hopefully more of that will ensue after the event's over with, right? We are, uh, PrimeNet was in a situation that uh, uh, Joe Miska, our, our Xerox representative, really went through uh, the effort to, to set this tour up. And he went through that because uh, our owner, uh, we're in a situation where we had an opportunity to produce uh, 2,500 personalized variable postcards per, per week and the possibility of going up to 5,000. And currently, I have a Series 3 and a Series 4 iGen that are about at capacity. So Ralph has a product that we thought we could use. So that was why we, uh, we made the move to go over and take a look at how they run it, how they look uh, at the backside as far as mail mm -hmm. distribution. And Joe and Ernie set that up. Uh, and it, it was very beneficial for PrimeNet. And thanks, Ralph, for doing it. Oh, no problem. But let me just add another comment. You know, I went over to one of our competitors just last week, uh, Palm Coast Data, is a direct competitor with Time Customer Service because we sort of steal each other magazines back and forth. You know, we'll bring one publisher over, and then 10 years later, we'll go back, you know, to the East Coast. But it's always interesting to, you know, it's hard to get out of the office. But when you do, when you're at another shop, you know, anytime you can see what's going on there, it's amazing the things you pick up not even necessarily relative to printing, of course. You can go around the operational floor and see all kinds of, oh, there's a different way to skin that cat. And if not that, at least a chance to go back and challenge the way you're doing it because, you know, somebody else is doing it just a bit differently than you are. Mm -hmm. It's always a good experience. All right, so this, you're both in mail, right? It's a big part of your output and your final product. Um, what are the changes that you guys have seen over the last couple of years doing to your businesses from an investment standpoint, whether it's technology, software, maybe we should start there with the manufacturing process itself. Any thoughts on that? I uh, have uh, seen changes in the last seven years dramatically where we have uh, set up, I believe we have 12 websites right now for our customers that uh, order via the web uh, directly to PrimeNet. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, 12, 15 years ago, it used to be the posted note, wait for the fax. Uh, even the email correspondence was uh, a little bit different, but we perceived it as an opportunity. We went out, we created the website, and uh, we created the, the initial website because we had a, uh, a learning center that was generating leads in Tampa, and we were doing the postcard. And uh, we had success, and she came back and said, uh, you know, we'd like to do this again next month. And I, you know, I'm not a real smart guy, but you can kind of pick up on repetition. So I said, how many other people like you are in the United States? Uh, this learning center, we have 300 sites uh, that we deal with. We have roughly 90% of their business. Every order comes in through the website. Uh, and we touch it probably twice internally. Uh, and I can tell you before, we always had an account manager managing that. With the multiple websites now driving it through digital print as well as uh, wet print, the sites have, have just been a wonderful godsend for us. And not only that, but they pay online, so you get your money. Ah, oh, that oh. part. <laughs> Getting yeah. paid. Cash flow. The, the, owner, the owner likes that. So, 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 you know, my version of that would be, I think it was about 10 years ago, there was a huge initiative at timing to get everybody to, you know, pay and renew by credit card and, you know, back to what we heard earlier, print's dead, you know, and it's not going to be there. Well, we had our largest year last year. You know, as, as somebody said on, you know, one of the earlier panels, you know, direct mail is hardly dead. And in our world, our retention work is coming down, our direct mail is going, and I would bet in five years we'll see it do this. So the difference in our two companies is we have no creative requirements, if you will, at Time Customer Service. That's all done at our publisher side, either at, you know, Time Magazine, People Magazine, some of our outside clients, such as, you know, National Geographic, Foreign Affairs, and that kind of stuff. So we, you know, we're clearly the operational side of getting the job done. And one position that we take at Time Customer Service is we, we never pretend we're marketers, right? We, we're always telling our clients that, you know, we want to let you be marketers and we're here to do what you do. So or what you want to do. So from a creative standpoint, we're there to execute. So what I spend a good deal of my time dealing with from a process perspective is how do you manage in our world 147,000 unique jobs a year with an average job size of 1,800 pieces? 
or as I would call it, how do you deal with a deck that you've been delivered? So we do that. We deal with that through technology. You know, our first investment in digital printing color you know, it was an iGen 3 back, I think we're on our fifth anniversary now, you know, and contemplating where to go next and where to go next, we're thinking is going to be, you know, the inkjet side of the world, you know, from whatever vendor we would end up choosing. But, you know, I need to take the 2,800 different forms that we're printing on. You know, we did 38,000 one-piece jobs last year. So how do you deal with that when you don't step on a marketer's toe? You just deal with it by using technology. So clearly we're, you know, we're seeing our world shift and we sort of built the infrastructure on the iGen platform. Now we need the speed to take all of those small jobs, you know, at a far less click charge and, you know, cost of, of ownership, if you will, to get that work done. So um, are your customers driving you to more and more change, whether that's higher levels of customization, um, higher levels of, of quick, you know, shorter turnarounds, those kinds of things? Is that sure, part of what's sure. driving so, it too? you know, as anybody would know in the magazine business, you know, we, we seem to have been lumped in with the newspaper side when they say print is dead. And what the industry is struggling with is separating the two, the magazine side from the newspaper side, because in reality, you know, um, uh, subscriptions are actually up. But we're having difficulty selling ad space because we're sort of lumped into, you know, the print is dead type from the newspaper kind of quandary that we have. But what we're challenged to do, and this is, you know, relatively new, the minute Time Inc. committed to putting all of their magazines on tablets, which was completed for, you know, 36, 38 titles, I believe, by December of last year. We now ended up with the requirement of they don't want to print the cover of People magazine on an offset form because the minute they do it by that Friday, it's now outdated. So that's what we're seeing where all of our branding type stuff, especially when you're in the weekly magazine business such as People and Time and those, you know, those folks are, that they, we, we need to now sort of simulate the digital you know, iPad type stuff in the, in the actual print space. So that's going to become a challenge and now we're going to need a lot more horsepower to do that because you know, people changes every week and time changes every week. And you know, we, we offer our subscriptions now is if you pay the full digital and print subscription, you get to live in both of those spaces and they don't want you know, the latest cover of who's ever on time to be now outdated on what we're sending out from a retention perspective. Mm -hmm. So you're predicting going to tablet is actually going to increase your production volume. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I think this year is slated to be maybe another 3 or 4%. If we're lucky, 5% above you know, last year. So that's a good thing in a struggling market for sure. Mm -hmm. And 3 to 5% with the numbers you're talking about is a pretty big number. It's it a is. pretty big number. <laughs> right. it is. It's something we can live with, right? We yeah. will cope, yes. We will cope. So I, I think the timing too, uh, uh, again, I'll reference uh, just the one on our learning centers. The, the time frames as far as turning around projects. Uh, in this particular situation, we used to pre, uh, just to present a five and a half, eight and a half postcard that we would run through an inkjet with a map and driving directions mm -hmm. to their site. And as we've gravitated and the marketing groups have gotten smarter, the, the mailing quantities are less, but they're so uh, profiled that we will take a postcard and identify inside the household uh, the gender of the child, the location that they live in, demographics that they live in as far as the household, and then their closest site as far as that training center. So when we produce uh, the postcard, it's also timed to be within their report card period. So if you're in a different county or a different right. state, different school district, uh, yeah. you, have, you have a little bit to, uh, the time frame, you may only have three days to turn a million seven to two, two million postcards, but every one of those postcards is by gender with a picture. It has a map and driving directions. It'll tell you how long it'll take you to get to the center. Plus it's uh, mailed third class with, with an IMB post uh, uh, net barcode in it. Uh, so it's the most efficient way but it has to be timed and it has to be in home to coincide with the report card. So Man, I'm, I'm glad you guys weren't around when I was a kid. I would have been getting one of those postcards every about three months. <laughs> well, let me ask it, you it's this, amazing. Yeah. It, what both of you is now have commented on, either your marketing department or the marketeers that you're working with, um, it seems like they've come a long way with understanding what's possible with this new technology because it seems like 
for a while it was kind of the printer was pushing back to the ad agencies and the creatives trying to explain to them uh, what they could do from a personalization one to one, change the format, yeah. maybe you know get a dimensional piece, etc. They just didn't seem to know or understand. Sounds like, or at least what you're telling us, is a lot of this information on how the technology has changed is finally taking hold in the ad agency creative world. Would you both agree with that? I I would, and uh, the the customers that are buying our products are also a lot smarter. They're coming back and. Uh, they're looking at ROI. Uh, they want to make sure that the, the dollars that they've expended for the piece, as well as for the postage, that they're going to get the return. And when they have the ROI and we share that, uh, we do things on the backside that other, customer, other direct marketers do not do, and that's we do drive time analysis on a lot of the products that uh, we one. supply to our customers. We go back to them and say, you know, your customers are not going to drive more than 8.9 miles. They will not do it in today's world with the petrol. If there's a natural encumbrance like a bridge uh, or something in between that site, they're not going to come. So we're trying to, we're, we have to get smarter. Yeah. And if you take a look at PrimeNet.com, uh, we have proof statements. Uh, we're constantly going through white papers as far as ROI, return on, why did you mail? And we get, we get it directly from the customer. So that from my vantage point with the sale, it's easier to go in and get the second order. That's right. Because uh, yeah, you know the conversions. I mean, we all talked about this, and we talked about it with our other couple of customers as well this morning, that the best market, and you said it here, I think, best marketing collateral is the proof source from another client. Right. right. Yeah, good. Um, so I, I want to ask you a question that and I phrased it a little earlier. Um, not that this is pre-scripted, but we do talk a little bit about what we want to talk about, right? But we talked about what's next and what gets you excited. But maybe the better way to ask it is the way Bill Taylor phrased it in his comments this morning. So we talked about the industry, the four of us, earlier. And I guess I'm wondering, so you both, without being, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to be offensive, I'm dancing around where I'm going. You've both been around the industry a while. I think Gina said it a little bit more directly. <coughs> she well, said we were yeah. old? Yes. She said we were old. <laughs> Gina, said, Gina said that they were old yeah. and that they were I said they were mature. Ma yes. Mature. Uh, no, so, but, but, you know, you've both been around the industry a long time. You've seen major changes. What gets you up in the morning? Why are you still in it? And, oh, by the way, is this an industry that a 22-year-old college kid should be thinking about? And, oh, by the way, how do we go get them? Well, I'll go first, I guess. So, you know, in, in a production world that we live in, you know, our average age of the folks that, that work there day in and day out are actually in the mid 40s, believe it or not. So that's interesting. That's pretty good. However, however, we are there, there is significant interest in the latest and greatest technology, you know, from a production standpoint. But more importantly. Where I think we can get them hooked in, and we've proven this over the last few years, is on the front side of the process. So from a you know, pre-press standpoint, you know, the art side of things, the creative side, anything relative to that clearly gets those kind of folks' feet wet in, in the business that I'm in particularly. And then we've had a few cases where we've had guys that have come on board just to do pre-press work you know, that are actually very savvy print operators now that you know, they've sort of made that that transition and they sort of have what I call production in their blood mm -hmm. and they get up every day to you know to get that stuff done and can stand there and do what they do while dabbling in the technical side which is kind of interesting and if you can keep their their feet wet and the tools that you use in this industry to do the work that we do it sort of keeps them fresh and alive and you know and then next thing you know they've got their friend knocking on your door asking you know do you have any jobs and you know this type of business because I certainly didn't grow up thinking I would do anything like this, for sure. Any more than I'm sure you did. Yeah, I, I didn't either. The, uh, uh, I think how we, how we keep them involved and how we get them involved, uh, we have HTML programmers, uh, and we're a marketing database company, and we do a, a ton of analytics on the backside. Uh, PrimeNet happens to be a partner. We own the largest residential database in the United States. And... One of the reasons we have that is other people come to us to acquire it, and we constantly have to enhance it. We have mm -hmm. to uh, go through the CAS certifications, all the wonderful postal things. But again, it's all technology driven. And I think if we're going to have new young blood come into our organization, I really think it's on the technology side, uh, whether that be 
you know, on the digital side, whether that be on the data analytics side. Uh, but that's where I think they're going to gravitate to. So, uh, but with our websites, with our, our company web, you know, we're constantly putting a new address on the website. It seems like every other week uh, we need something else. So our, uh, we've developed uh, proprietary products. We have a proprietary product for ROI called Prime Track. We have another one that uh, we're testing a postal service and we call it Prime Track. And we're testing delivery to the individual household throughout the U.S. using intelligent mail barcodes. And uh, we're probably one of four or five that are doing that. But again, I think the young people will gravitate to that. Uh, yeah, I, it's interesting. I was at a, an event last week for community colleges throughout the country. Um, and the president of uh, Piedmont uh, Community College in Charlotte or the North Carolina area spoke um, about this, kind of this very subject, and he used this industry as a, an example. He said, you know, in the old days, if you wanted to be, go into the printing industry, you got an apprenticeship to become a, a press operator or you moved into the pre-press organization, and that's what all our education was about. He said, now, it's all, it, there's still trades out there. The trade now is all technology-driven, right? And there's all these certifications. So that was his whole thing, but he was talking specifically about how community colleges need to change their model to attract students to trades. He just said, they're different mm -hmm. trades now. It's not about being a pressman, it's now about being on the front end of the technology side if you're in the printing industry. And he, he was doing that, I think, partially because there were a number of people from our, our industry at the event, but that was his whole take. So I think you're right on it. That's the place where we can get people excited um, to come into, the, come into the business. What about the, the first question I asked, and I know I asked you like three in a row, what gets you up in the morning? What keeps you excited about the industry? Well, uh, <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I definitely have a passion for the business. I'm a very competitive person. Uh, I've been around, uh, I'll be 65 in October, and you kind of say, okay, when are you going to slow down? And you go through stages in your life after your kids get done their college and you, you, you're, you're successful there. You go, boy, uh, now I can slow down. Now I can rest, well, yeah. Then comes these other things called motorcycles and boats and Toys. other things you like to enjoy. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing I think is really important, we built a brand new building last year for PrimeNet. And uh, being part of that, it's, it's like having another teenager where you go through it and you think, boy, I've got everything figured out. <laughs> well, you don't when you build it. You know, I need another 10 ton of air conditioner. I'm sorry you didn't have the right terminals for the electrical. Uh, the iGen can't go there because it's, it's going to generate too much heat. So. There's new challenges in this business every day. And in, last year, we mailed 100 million mail pieces plus. We have a pretty large bill to the post, uh, post office. And I've kind of taken it on as a challenge every morning. I just say, drop the puck. Uh, I want to make a sale, or I want to beat a postmaster. So it has to be competitive, and you have to have uh, uh, the, the reason you get up is to sell something and move on. So. Uh, I enjoy it, it's, uh, and I have an owner that is willing to buy things when we commit and say, and we can justify it, so it's fun. Yeah, Ralph, how about you? So, you know, I think, as I said earlier, that I, you know, I would gauge success in this business by, you know, what I call having production in your blood, so that's sort of me, true and true, and, you know, every day is yet another, another challenge to, you know, get through stuff, you know, we're sitting here today, out of the office and, you know, there's something going radically wrong as we're sitting here with, you know, a very high-end client that's doing something with us for the first time and, you know, see so you sit here with the stress and, you know, but the solutions are there. It's really about coming up with solutions every day to, to you know, do this kind of work, which is kind of daunting, you know, and, and most importantly, you know, I, I take most of my success by the folks that work for me, in, you know, in general, when they go home at day, you know, at the end of the day and, I really have a whole lot of respect for somebody that can stand in an end of a 300 feet a minute printer producing 300,000 pieces of mail in a 12 hour day standing. You know, there's certain types of people that y yeah. you have to have in this world and yep. amen to all of them because we wouldn't be here without them, right? That's, sure. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, one of you is l running out the door. Is that true? Potentially? All right, so we have a couple of minutes and before you do, um, I wanted to ask, this is a good time to stop. Got two of your peers at the at the desk. Anybody have any questions for Chuck or Ralph? Nobody? Really? 
Well, oh, did you do that one? Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, for either one of you, in your variable data, have you, are you now adding uh, pearls and cubes and all that kind of stuff yet, or are you basically more just the, the mail out pieces? How interesting that the <laughs> job we're having trouble with happens to have pearls on it. But, I just, yeah. <laughs> but it's nothing to do. That's not the problem. But, but anyways, yeah. yes, we've been doing that for you know, quite a while now. So that's absolutely part of what we take pride in for sure. Yep. I have one here. Uh, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty unique direct mail piece. Uh, and, and again, this is created off your, your iGen. But... Uh, it, it's Le Cavier for anybody that knows anything about hockey in the Tampa area. But each one of these that we mailed had uh, the individual that we addressed it to had their name on the jersey. And then we die cut it. Uh, and you had, uh, if you called in, and, uh, and it was a, a pearl set up, uh, if you either called in or hit their website, you had a call back from the Tampa Bay Lightning Ticket Center within 10 minutes. Wow. And with that... Uh, you got your first ticket free, and the, mm. the nine additional you had to buy. You have an, you have, cool. you, you have an NHL team? We Seriously? did, yeah. Yes. They won the Stanley Cup, too. I live in, I live in Cleveland. Yeah. We don't have an NHL team. That's a northern town. Yeah. You know what we got? We, here's what Cleveland has. We get to root. Let me think. This year we get to root for Oklahoma City. That's what we get to do. That's what it's like to be a Cleveland fan. But that's a great Listen, question. Listen, kids. Uh, on, on the pearls, uh, 800 numbers, email sites, websites, uh, all of your customers are asking you for different venues on how can that prospect respond. Yep. So the pearl is just an excellent way of doing it. The gal, uh, web, e, yep. 1-800s. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's great.